Hello everyone, welcome to my weekly Coyotes chat. It's 2 p.m. on Wednesday, so that means it's time to talk Coyotes hockey. The Coyotes have a practice day today in Toronto. Um, they are in the midst of this four-game road trip before the Christmas break. They lost 3-1 to one last night in Montreal despite scoring the first goal and taking that one goal lead into the third period. Um, but now it's time to prepare for the Maple Leafs, who they will play tomorrow night at Air Canada Centre at 5 p.m start Arizona time. Um, so let's get started with the chat with your questions. Uh, the first one comes from David. It seems like the offense will be outstanding and our goaltending will fail at key situations on some nights and then the opposite other nights. It makes it so frustrating. Why is it so hard for this team to find a consistent balance this year? Uh, that's a great point by David. It does seem like it's hard for all the ingredients to come together at the same time and deliver. Um, I would say that the offense has been the most consistent component of the team so far this season. And all the other areas, defending, goaltending, special teams, have kind of had their ups and downs. Um, you know, that game last night was a perfect example. Um, you know, Smith, I think, was playing fairly well. The Coyotes were really clinging to that one goal lead, but they couldn't find the insurance goal. They couldn't boost that lead to a two, three goal cushion. And part of that went back to special teams. They had a four minute power play in the second that they could do nothing with. And, you know, if you get at least one goal there, maybe even two, you feel totally comfortable. And it's a completely different game at that point if it's a two or three nothing game. Uh, I think injuries has a lot to do with this. Looking at last night's game, Zabinik Mahalik goes down after only one shift, and he's their best penalty killer. So, you know, that makes it tougher for the PK to be at its peak, and they give up two power play goals in the third, and that's why they lose. Um, injuries, they're missing, you know, aside from Mahalik right now, they're missing Shane Doan, they're missing Lori Korpakovsky, Derek Morris has been under the lineup trying to work back his conditioning since uh, his absence from the team. Uh, it's just been difficult for them to have a lineup and still stick with it and get that consistency and I think that's why it's been so hard for them to be consistent in other areas. Overall the offense has been pretty healthy. I think that's why it's probably one of the most consistent areas. We haven't seen vital, vital pieces aside from right now with Shane Doan being out gone for long periods of time. Mike Ribeiro has been healthy. Antoine Vermette has been healthy. Redeem Verbata has been in there. Martin Hansel has been in there. Um, so that's enabled the offense to really kind of keep clicking. But that hasn't been the case on defense, where they've lost Sabinik Mahalik for long, long stretches. And then, you know, the pairings have kind of been uh, in, you know, changing, you know, evolving. You have Connor Murphy in there now earlier in the season. Um, you know, David Rumblad was playing more. So I think that's just been the struggle to piece it all together. And then you throw in Smith, whose play has been up and down at times. Other times he's been very strong, and so I think it's all linked together. I think if the defense can get consistent, Smith will be consistent, and they feed off each other, and then we'll kind of see that complete game that we've been looking for from the Coyotes, but I think it's definitely been a struggle. I think there's probably only been a handful of games this season where they felt that all pieces of their games have been working, and that's really the challenge right now to get all those cylinders firing at the same time. Okay, next question comes from Matthew David. Is Doan feeling any better working out or skating at all? Um, that's obviously in relation to Doan's illness right now. How is he doing? Um, it's it's kind of difficult right now to get updates since he's not with the team on this road trip. He's at home by himself, but um, we were left with the impression before the Coyotes embarked on this road trip that he would uh, you know, keep trying to work on building up his strength and, and dealing with the fatigue. That seemed to be the biggest factor, um, and that's why they wanted him to stay at home and rest. You know, as recent as Saturday, he was already on the bike riding for 10 minutes. So, you know, it'd probably be safe to expect that he continued to progress in that direction if he's been feeling well. But uh, he did say most recently that he is doing better. Um, you know, now it's just a matter of sticking to this medication and letting it do its job and really just kind of feeling back to normal. He, he is able to resume normal activities, so that's a good sign. But I think it really is just about getting rid of that fatigue and, and um, you know, finding energy and strength. Strength. So it's possible jo Doan joins the Coyotes at some point on this trip, and I think if he does, I think that's when we could really possibly see him skating. Um, you know, because if he was just to 
hang around the team and rest and just you know ride the bike he could do that at home so I think if he does join the team we could see him start skating and really start to build up his on ice conditioning so that'll be something to watch as we move forward okay next question comes from Art Z is a great player there's no doubt but he's only one guy why does the PK seem to fall apart when he is out of the lineup uh, Art's question kind of piggybacks off of my first point in response to David's question that Z is their best penalty killer. And we saw how difficult it is for the Coyotes lately um, you know, to perform when he's not out there. Two Montreal power play goals really spelled the difference in last night's loss. Uh, I think what Z does so effectively that other players don't necessarily do so willingly is cut up, you know, cut off and block shooting lanes. Um, you know, obviously he's the team leader in block shots. He had 72 block shots going into the Montreal game, and he had six in that previous game Saturday against the Carolina Hurricanes, one shy of his season high. And I just don't think anyone else is willing to risk their body and get down in those shooting lanes. Obviously, other players block shots, but Mahalik is very adept at, at cutting off those lanes, taking away the time and space, and I just don't think the Coyotes have another defender like that. Um, so, you know, his loss is, is felt. We'll see where he's at if he is able to return for the Toronto game. It does sound, though, like Morris will be able to return for the Toronto game. That was kind of the date that they tentatively had circled on the calendar where they thought that he'd have a couple good practices in the bank, that his conditioning and fitness would be ready to go after missing a week um, to attend to a family matter. So we'll continue to progress that. But, you know, that really just shows the value that a steady, strong PK you know, stay-at-home defenseman has in this system. It's very predicated on on that style of blocking shots, taking away shooting lanes, breaking up those you know those chances that teams have to get their shots off. And no one really does that better on the Coyotes than Mahalik. So they definitely feel his absence when he's not in there to execute that for the Coyotes. Okay, our next question comes from Jesse. Are they considering making any more moves to bolster the lineup? Um, you know, I think definitely right now Don Maloney is is looking. Um, you know, it's right before the Christmas break, so don't expect anything to happen leading up, um, you know, to that time period. We'll see what happens right after. They have a back-to-back -back right after the break um, at home against San Jose, and then they're going to um, – Anaheim, so that'll be an interesting stretch to see if they're able to get any big division points in that in that stretch of games. But um, you know, for for so long we've been saying this team is searching for a left winger to complement the hands over bottom line, and I think that's still accurate. But I also think now they're they're looking for some defensive depth, and that's maybe surprising because we've always said this organization prides itself on so many blue liners in the pipeline, and um, yeah, they have too many. So. Maybe Maybe a move happens because um, that's an area that they, they'd like to be stronger in. And, and, you know, all these points that are being brought up in these questions, um, you know, it goes back to finding a consistent defensive performance, and they just haven't had that this year, whether it's by injury, other issues, just guys not performing at their peak every game. But um, I think they would like to add an NHL forward and an NHL defenseman, and whether or not they're able to accomplish that, we'll wait and and see, right now there's just so many teams in the thick of the races, the playoff races, that you know everyone thinks they still have a chance. And so right now you don't see many teams opening up you know, their teams and, and putting a for sale sign down in front of it. So that could change as we get into January and maybe the packs start to separate a little bit. But right now too many teams are in contention, I think, for them to start um, you know, just offering up their players for bargain prices. Okay. Next question comes from Phoenix Jet. Is the team tough enough, both physically and mentally? I'm not sure. Uh, that's a great point. You know, I think uh, I think right now, you know, it's tough when you're dealing with all this adversity. I think it does weigh on you a little mentally when you're losing guys to illness, injury. You just can't find that consistency. Um, and so I think it goes back to the individual players having confidence. 
and you know collectively then coming together and playing as a confident group um, as far as physically um, you know I think they do all right in that department I don't think it's always about hitting but I think it's just about being strong on the puck and being able to win puck battles and I think they have some great players who do that Martin Hansel is is one guy you think of it's so hard to move him off the puck and he's just plays a physically strong game that way um, and their wingers you know you look at guys like Rob Klinkham or Dave Moss those are guys that do a really good job just going up and down their wing playing a north-south game um, that they make it hard on the opponent to sometimes take the puck off them um, so it, it's not always just about the brawn of can you fight and you know can you deliver that big body check I think it's you know more with puck possession and being strong on the puck and um, having that especially in the offensive zone right now is really key for the Coyotes um, this question comes from Jack. These ups and downs are driving me crazy. What major moves do you anticipate the Coyotes making in the near future? Um, going back to that previous question, I don't think we're going to see anything right away. Um, but I do think it's possible that they shake something up, especially if they're still in the hunt. Um, we know the, the past tendency of Don Maloney as general manager of this team has been to make a move at or near the trade deadline to really push them into that playoff race, solidify a spot, and prepare for the playoffs. I don't think this year will be any different um, especially when you know we see that ownership is in place the budget is there you know they're kind of at their spending limit now but you know they're not afraid to go to ownership and say we need some a little bit more we have our eye on this guy we want to add him and I think ownership is is open to um, listening to that um, so we'll continue to monitor that okay our last question today comes from Pat and Prescott hey Pat Thanks for joining in. Uh, Sarah, the Yotes offense has been in a funk in the past few games and can't seem to put teams away. The season is far from lost, but a bad month will kill a team in the Pacific. Any trade rumors floating around to help team improve the situation? Uh, again, Pat, I mean, this is something that, you know, they're always on the lookout. They're always on the lookout to see, you know, if they can add to this group and improve it. Um, I think the great point that Pat makes in here is that really a month can hurt your chances in the Pacific with how tight it is and I think it's important that the Coyotes recognize that urgency and I think they do I think that's why there's a lot of impetus and uh, with this with this road trip that they're currently in now going into the Christmas break they're going to be off Christmas Eve Christmas Day and the day after um, Christmas those are non practice days so it's it's really a shutdown for that time and they want to feel good about themselves going into to Pacific games right after the break so um, you know I don't think anything is eminent um, you know there just kind of seems to be a little bit of a lull in the league around the holidays in terms of you know transactions and activities but um, perhaps we see something soon after maybe before the Olympic break because um, you know you have that month of February basically off for the Olympics but you get right back into it and you might not have enough time to, to climb back into a race if you're out of it by the end of February so great point by Pat that this division is so tight this year that the urgency to play well and grab as many points every night is vital and the Coyotes have a great opportunity right now on this Eastern road trip because there's no fear of the loser point there's no fear of going to overtime and sacrificing a point to the other team because it won't hurt your own standings in the West um, so they should really be trying to get at least one point in a game. Obviously, that didn't happen last night in Montreal. But I think they have a great opportunity now with these last three games, um, you know, to beat a team in Toronto that's struggling of late and two below 500 non-playoff teams in Ottawa and Buffalo. So we'll see how the Coyotes, uh, you know, finish out this road trip. Um, it's a tough stretch, travel, um, colder climates than they're used to in the desert, but it's really vital for them to pick up some points and really stay in the pack um, you know, by their performance on this trip. Um, so thank you again for joining in for my chat. I really appreciate you guys submitting questions and, and getting involved. Um, obviously, it's Christmas next week, so we will see how our schedule changes. But make sure to follow me on Twitter at EZC underscore McClellan and check out at EZC Sports for all the Coyotes news and links um, to keep you updated on the team. So thank you so much, and we will see you next time.